Since A1 license have been suspended and revoked, the town has received numerous complaints to date, but only one individual is willing to come forward. The municipal clerk is unable to bring these instances forward due to the fact that there needs to be real evidence respecting the proving of non-compliance with this bylaw. The municipal clerk is satisfied that all evidence submitted here today proves reasonable grounds for belief of the provoking of all A1 taxi licenses. Now if council wants to proceed to tab four. Now I'll submit evidence of past contact offenses based upon section 2.51 of the taxi cab bylaw, as well as section 151.4b of the Municipal Act 2001. In summary, non-compliance with the provisions of bylaw number 014-2014 is an offense, and the municipal clerk, as described previously, has authority to revoke and suspend a license for any instance of non-compliance with the bylaw. Section 11.1a provides that the municipal clerk may revoke, suspend, or refuse to renew a license where a license has been found to fail to comply with any provision of the bylaw. Pursuant to section 1514b of the Municipal Act 2001, allows discretion to be exercised on the basis that there is reasonable grounds to believe a person will not carry on or engage in a business in accordance with law or with honesty and integrity. The following evidence provides additional basis and reasonableness of past history and conduct of anyone tax to support the revocation of this taxi cab business license. Second non-compliance issues with AWA Taxi. On December 4, 2019, the Town of Cobra provided a formal notice of suspension based on non-compliance with bylaw number 014-2014, part 2.1A and section 2.2A of amending bylaw number 088-2016. Regarding the renewal of taxi cab owner licenses. A1 failed to meet the deadline of November 30th, 2019 to renew all taxi cab owner licenses, but still proceeded to operate nine taxi cabs expired license in the town of Coburg. This can be found on tab four, pages 36 to 39. After repeated attempts to contact A1 Taxi and confirm times for municipal staff to attend a location for taxi calibrations of each vehicle in order to meet the provisions of the bylaw, A1 Taxi failed to meet the scheduled times in order to help assist the company Further, the town made adjustments in operations in order to schedule an additional date. With this new date, only one vehicle attended, and that vehicle passed conditionally due to uh, front rear headlights being out. Also, no vehicle safeties or insurance were provided at the time of calibration, as we found at tab, tab 4, page 40. Now to note section 2.21a of amending bylaw number 088-2016 shows that an application for taxi cab owner operated license or for the renewal of a taxi cab owner license shall be completed and submitted to the licensing officer on the prescribed forms together with the appropriate license fee as per the corporation's fees and charges schedule a minimum of one week prior to november 30th of each year or as required throughout the year for vehicles acquired after november 30th so seven days with expired tax cap licenses were proceeded through and i'll show the evidence when they were renewed this infractions in these examples relates to section 3.1 of the taxi cab bylaw, section 5.2.1F, section 7.3.1B, section 7.4.1C, section 7.41.1E. On December 5th, 2019, the school clerk received an email from the Cobra Police relaying statements from A1 drivers being stopped by Cobra Police that A1 will be getting the license back in 10 minutes. Again, this is still when A1 is suspended by the municipal clerk through a formal letter. The municipal clerk then responded that A1 taxi is still suspended and will not be receiving their licenses in the town and receives compliance and all renewals are submitted and processed by the licensing officer. At this time, the town had not received any renewal documents from A1 taxi. This can be found on tab 4, page 43 to 44. Section 2.5.1 is the bylaw fraction related to this offense under the taxi cap bylaw as well as A, the past conduct or information supplied by the applicant or licensee affords reasonable grounds for belief that the applicant or license will not carry on the activity for which the applicant is to be licensed in accordance with this bylaw, applicable law, integrity, and honesty. Additionally, on December 6, still when A1 Taxi was suspended by the town of Coburg, Taxi Dispatch through email, labeled as A1 Dispatch, contacted Town of Coburg Licensing Officer during the suspension requesting a letter be sent to them saying, 
A1 taxi has been really reinstated and the suspension lifted. This is not a case of fact. They were looking to, quote, ease everybody's mind. The email requested that if this is something you could do, that would be great, or I can have something typed out and bring it down to someone to sign. This request was submitted when the town still had not received any renewal applications and anyone taxi was still under suspension by the town. This can be found on page tab 4, page 41 to 42. And this relates to bylaw infraction section 2.5.1, as well as section B. On December 6, 2019, the Town of Coburg was contacted by Ontario Provincial Police Constable Kelly Mason of Brighton OPP Detachment. Again, this is when, count, when A1 Taxi was still suspended by the Town of Coburg and not received any renewal licenses. PC Mason contacted the Municipal Clerk to relay a message that she just arrived to a scene of a collision on Highway 401 between Coburg and Grafton in relation to a visibly marked A1 Taxi getting an accident while engaged with a patron conducting a fare that picked up a customer at the Coburg via rail station. PC Mason contacted the Municipal Clerk's office that she knew that A1 was currently suspended by the Town. In addition, it was reported that the taxi did not have any ownership information within the taxi cab and there was no insurance on the vehicle, as well as the vehicle was not licensed or approved to be operating or picking up fares within the town cover. These offenses are not only required of the taxi cab bylaw, but also required under the Highway Traffic Act. This is considered a major infraction relating to the protection and health and safety requirements of the approved taxi cab bylaw number 014-2014. The Town of Coburg issued a provincial offenses fine to 1979388 Ontario Limited for operating a taxi cab with no taxi cab license or permitting a taxi cab to operate without a taxi cab license. And this can be found on tab 4, page 45 to 46. I'm not sure if Kelly Mason is in attendance. She was supposed to come today. I don't see her, so um, I guess she's not here. This infraction relates to section 3.1 of the taxi cab bylaws, section 5.2.1F, section 7.3.1B, section 7.41C, and section 7.41E. He, he just said he wasn't here. Well, I'm well, well. <laughs> Hi, Kelly, how are you? I, I'm well, thank you. <laughs> Apologize for my tardiness, I came from Calvert. So, Mr. Chair, as I could, I could call uh, PC Kelly Mason to the stand. Yes, proceed. <laughs> So if, you, if I could chair and the hearing members committee, if I could ask PC Mason Kelly to provide her uh, recollection of the counts leading up to when she contacted my office, uh, as well as the events leading up to the actual offense and finishing off with A1 Taxi and the owner business. Proceed when you're ready. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Sergeant Kelly Mason, uh, badge number 8769, North Armland Detachment at the OPP. On Friday, the 6th of December, 2019, I was working a day shift in a uh, marked cruiser assisting, assisting the platoon of that day. The, um, it was a snowstorm. And because of that, I was dispatched to a collision on the 401 in the area of mile marker 504. In the first part of the morning, which is down at the Brighton end, and by 10.23 I was dispatched to a second motor vehicle collision, this one being a um, personal injury accident, otherwise known as PIMBC in our world, on the westbound lanes 401 at uh, mile marker 478, which then led me to just your indulgence for a moment here, it was a busy day. <laughs> I've had a busy day. So I arrived on scene at 1034 in the, in the uh, AM. It was a single motor vehicle into the wall. The driver of that vehicle was a William Jarvis, who was operating a 2005 Honda four-door silver, Ontario marker, Charlie Charlie X-ray Kilo 367, that's CCXK 367. 
It was noted there were no snow tires on it. The registered owner was a numbered company. The numbered company was 1979388 Ontario Limited. Running out of an address of 125 Densmore Road in Coburg with a phone number of 905-372-4449, also known as A1 Taxi. Insurance information was not available in the vehicle at the time of uh, on scene at the collision. In this particular scenario, there was uh, there was a passenger in that vehicle who did suffer uh, injury. She was transported to Coburg Hospital for treatment. We investigated the collision and. I subsequently ended up attending uh, or pardon me I spoke with the um, injured individual who indicated that she was on her way to uh, Workworth Institution to see her son and she was going by taxi that vehicle was removed by next level towing uh, it was noted by myself and another officer on the scene, um, Constable Doug Fluke, that the taxi was not displaying uh, their license number in any way on the exterior of the vehicle. At that point, I contacted the Coburg Town Clerk, Mr. Brent Larmer, and learned that A1 Taxi was not licensed for any work in the town of Coburg. And I was aware at that point in time that the taxi, uh, the passenger in that vehicle who was the taxi fare had been picked up at the Coburg Via station for transport to Workworth Institution. She was, um, I believe she was a resident of Burlington and had taken the train into town, picked up a cab uh, to go to Workworth and because of the snowstorm was involved in the collision. At the conclusion of, uh, I followed up at the hospital with the victim. Again, she confirmed that she was going to see her son in Workworth, came into town by via rail to get a cab from the train station in Coburg. And then she gave me the particulars pertaining to the, act, the collision itself. At the conclusion of that, I uh, contacted Mr. Larmer again to get the taxi owner information because uh, at this point as part of my investigation I had no proof of insurance so I for my own police investigation I had uh, obviously a number of things I needed to follow up on. I was advised that uh, Mr. Verinder Gill was the owner uh, working out of the location of 401 Motel. Uh, the address on the actual vehicle that was involved in the collision was 125 Densmore Road but I was advised his office was at 401 Motel uh, on Division Street in the town. Mr. Larmer was able to confirm with me that A1 is not licensed in Coburg and is not to do business in the town. I continued my investigation. I attended the 401 Motel, met with Mr. Gill. He was able to provide insurance for me the uh, insurance information he provided to me was through Intact. Policy number was uh, 7590002288 with an expiry date of the 9th of August, uh, 2020. And in discussions with him, I advised him that, uh, that the town of Coburg would be continuing an investigation based on some of the information that I was given with respect to whether or not he was uh, allowed to operate to initially even have the fare in his car in the first place to end up on the collision on the 401 and so on. I actually phoned Intact Insurance to, to uh, ensure that the insurance was um, uh, going to be valid in light of the information that the they were possibly in violation of their taxi license and at that point um, Intact actually was going to uh, cover that insurance and